On this episode, we travel to New Orleans for a Saints game and review the Marriott New Orleans. This is the second part of a series where we review all the top Marriott properties in New Orleans. Find out why we continue coming back to this hotel and what had Joel discussed it on Bourbon Street. Stay tuned. the second part of a series where we review all the top Marriott family of hotels in New Orleans. In the first part, we reviewed the Ritz Carlton New Orleans. If you missed it, I put a link in the description. And if you have a favorite Marriott hotel in New Orleans, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to see if some of those are not on my plans to review them yet. Like most of our trips to New Orleans, this would be a very quick one night trip for another Saints game. I find packing for these one nighters more stressful than a longer trip because there's less room for air when packing. On this trip, I forgot the power cable to my CPAP sleeping machine. We stopped at Whataburger to get lunch. If you ever visit Texas, you must try Whataburger. It's pretty amazing for fast food. Our flight was out of gate 18, and since we got there a little early, I pulled out my computer from my luggage and got online to see if I could buy a power cord for my breathing machine and pick it up in New Orleans. Our one hour flight to New Orleans on Southwest left right on time. Most people don't have to rent a car when coming to New Orleans. Getting to downtown hotels is very easy. This airport has one of the best setups for picking up Uber and Lyft, but that's not always your best option. During surge pricing, the pricing can be up to $80 to get between downtown and the airport. Taxis, on the other hand, charge a flat rate of $36 for two people or $15 per person if there's three or more. After a football game, that's usually the best option. The rate for Uber Uber right now is almost $53, so we're just gonna take a taxi. When you come out of the airport, if you're taking Uber, you wanna go to the right. And if you're taking Lyft, the line's gonna be on the left. Joel's way over there. Out of the three transportation lines, the taxi line was by far the shortest wait and the cheapest cost. Our cab driver, on the other hand, wasn't friendly at all. Cab drivers in New Orleans are unhappy with set pricing to the French Quarter and feel like Uber and Lyft drivers get to profit during the heavy demand times. We've been to the Marriott countless times and our driver decided to take us through a horrible route. We spent a great deal of time stuck in traffic. Car payment selected. We paid with a credit card using the app Curb. You can download it from your store if pre-booking taxis is your thing. Final cost, much cheaper. I'm crazy to take us around like that. Let's go check in. Wow, there's nobody in line. That's pretty awesome. Check-in was quick. And any time I ever walked by, there was never a wait. As busy as this hotel is, they've always done a great job of checking people in. Status benefits were also explained, which include access to an amazing M lounge. Frank Desk said we are upgraded. We're in the corner, it seems 1833. So it looks like we got a corner room and uh, it's really nice so the room room is simple it seems well maintained we have a corner view over here which has an awesome view of the river and you can actually see a carnival ship taking off pretty standard uh, marriott room is pretty well maintained it's clean check out the bed the comforters are somewhat heavy so that's good i usually do not like marriott pillows so we will see how i sleep on this tonight a great uh seating area if you if you want to need to do some work and if you got to do some work you just have a great view of new orleans we have coffee over here and some tea do we have a fridge yeah we have a fridge let's see how cold it is yeah it's pretty cold i only see one and two drawers that is not good Are there any drawers anywhere nope nope what's in the closet hopefully some space so you can put your luggage here there's a safe with lack of cabinet space we would probably have clothes all over our room like we did at the w in toronto or just living out of our suitcase luckily we're here just for one night and these travel cubes that we have make it very easy so if you're not using travel cubes you definitely need to use travel cubes i usually get my outfit for every day in a, one of these bags 
Recently, I broke the screen of my tablet that was inside my other stuff backpack when I tried shoving it under a seat on a flight. Since then, I've been mindful of how I pack. Level 8 has several unique and practical pieces of luggage that fit my needs when I travel. On this trip, I used the Roadrunner carry-on in a beautiful blue navy color. The back features a unique hard front storage area that easily fits my MacBook Pro. It allows for easy access when going through security also. The pouch fully opens with multiple pockets for cable and important documents like passports. The polycarbonate hard shells make the bag as light as a feather, and the white handle found on some bags provide great stability. My friends at Level 8 have provided a discount code for our viewers. I've posted the full details in the description below. Use the code RICK10 at checkout for a nice discount. Back to 74, let's lower this to the lowest possible. Restroom looks tiny. Ooh, this is tiny. I have to kind of step outside to be able to film this. Just very plain Jane, nothing exciting about the bathroom at all. Holiday Inn has nicer bathrooms than this. There is a tub. Some people like a tub in a shower. Very low ceiling. This stuff that Marriott uses, some of the worst stuff. Nothing exciting. We got three towels, bathroom, flushes. This hotel needs to be gutted and redone. It's not that hard. There's popcorn ceiling in the hallways that's from the 1970s, apparently, uh, and it's still there. Having had just stayed at the Sheraton Grand Seattle, this Marriott room was a letdown compared to what rooms under the new Sheraton rebrand look like. If you've been ignoring Sheraton hotels recently like many, you might be surprised at what the new rooms look like. I posted the link to the Sheraton Grand Seattle video in the description. The bathroom is super small and uh, their ceiling tiles. Ceiling height is probably about 6'3". If you're a basketball player, you wouldn't want to stay in that bathroom. <laughs> it's a good view. The views are nice. Really, the rooms are not bad for New Orleans standards, where the majority of hotels can use a little bit of loving. Later in the video, I'll share the best reason to stay at this hotel and why we keep coming back. Am I on shot? Yes, I am. I can see right there. What? I can see myself on camera. Well, that's just a screen. The elevators to the hotel are pretty cool. When you push what floor you want to go to, the elevator will assign you to a specific elevator. So when there's a lot of people trying to get into the elevators, it evenly spreads out people into different elevators. With more than 1,300 rooms, the Marriott is one of New Orleans' largest hotels. There's a total of 50 meeting rooms, including a 27,000 square foot conference room. 55 Fahrenheit is the heartbeat of this busy hotel. It's the first thing you can see when you enter the property. You can order drinks and small plates from the bar or from the waiter if you sit at the table. On game day, the place is hopping with people watching the games or just waiting for their flights or room to be ready. The Canal State Pantry has various snacks and drinks available. There's also a kiosk inside if you want to order from the menu. The valet is located on the side of the hotel. Next to the valet entrance is the 555 restaurant. The restaurant is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The fitness center has towels and cold water available at no charge. There are plenty of treadmills, including a few Peloton bikes. I did find the options for strength training to be a little bit limited. This burger bar is advertised as one of the dining options at the Marriott. It's closed right now, but it's usually really packed at night. I've never had it, but it's very popular. And the prices are going to be pretty reasonable too. There's so many good restaurants in New Orleans, and tonight we were able to get reservations at the new hotspot here is called Mamu. I think that's how you say it. It's M-A-M-O-U, Mamu. And it was voted as one of the top 50 best new restaurants by Bon Appetit. So we were able to get reservations two months ago for a 5.15 on a Saturday evening. So I'm starting dinner with a mocktail. It's called the Mint and Cream. And it has mint syrup, cream, chocolate, orange juice, and lemon. It's like a pretzel bread, isn't it? Eat it. I need you to eat, not put your finger in there. It's too hot. Eat it. What is, is it good? Everything we ordered was right on point and delicious. Joel's favorite was the cassoulet. Basically, mussels creme brulee. It's really, really, really tasty. We ended with a fancy dessert that looked much better than it tasted. The weather in New Orleans was lovely tonight, so we decided to walk back to the hotel. We passed by Lafitte's, which was built between 1722 and 1732. It is recognized as the oldest structure used as a bar in the United States today. We walked on Bourbon Street to get back to the hotel and passed by local favorite Lucky Dog, as well as Bourbon Street legend and future America's Got Talent Golden Bus winner, Big Mama. At 
one point, it seemed like all hell was about to break loose as the police was coming down to break up our street performance. It was just a street parade. Oh, I love New Orleans. corner of Bourbon Street and Canal Street. We're gonna see how long it takes to walk from here to the hotel. I mentioned earlier that there are two reasons we continue coming back to the Marriott. The first is its central location on Canal Street. The hotel is not that far of a walk to the Superdome for games. It's also far enough that after a football game, we are away from the crowds leaving the game, making it easier to catch an Uber back to the airport. Finally, its location makes it close to Bourbon Street, convenient for those that wanna party it up. Our walk took us three minutes back to the hotel. The next day is a long day with the game and travel, so we call it a night early by watching the LSU get destroyed by Alabama. Who that? I forgot my CPAP sleeping machine last night, so I didn't sleep too well, but even, even that, I still got some good sleep. The, the bed is really comfortable. We went to go check out the pool since we went last night and there was a few people in there. We've stayed at this hotel so many times and this is actually the first time we've ever seen the pool here. I didn't even know there was a pool, so this is kind of crazy. Uh, I don't think there's many hotels in New Orleans that have, have a pool this large. Pool towels are provided right by the door. There's also a laundry room located right at the pool entrance. At the lobby, the Bloody Mary bar was open early with customers already lined up. Yes, you look amazing. Beignets are sold at the lobby in the morning. If you come to New Orleans, you must try a beignet. They are little pieces of dough thrown into the fryer. When done, they are covered with powdered sugar and served to you in a paper bag. We are very proud of our beignets. They are simply amazing. Mm, mm. They're also very messy. The second big reason we stay at this Marriott is for the lounge they have if you have hotel status. The breakfast benefit across Marriott's is so inconsistent that it's great to run into a hotel that gives a full breakfast. This Marriott offers the same breakfast buffet in the lounge as they do in the restaurant next door. Thank you. The breakfast buffet had a large variety of food, including homemade beignets. But the reason this lounge stands out, I'll show you after the game. The world famous spa in Hollywood Health Club. Just kidding. Are you a Cowboys fan? Yeah, but um, but we're here, so today I'm in New Orleans. Who that? <laughs> yeah. How Wait, what did you say? Who that? Who that? <laughs> Oh, hell no. All right, Britney Spears. Before the game started, I ordered a mac and cheese with roast beef mixture. I was not a fan. The game, on the other hand, was a win for us over the Chicago Bears. After the game, we headed back to the hotel. We had a 4 p.m. checkout thanks to status, which allowed us to leave our luggage in the room and take a quick shower. Our flight would not take off for nearly five more hours. We were able to wait for our flight in the lounge in the evening, which is when I think this lounge really shines. Not only can you order drinks and food from a menu, the selection of free appetizers is more hearty than what I've seen in most evening lounges in the US hotels. These are some of the bites available at the lounge in the evening. This is the food that's available at the Priority Pass Lounge at the airport. Final thoughts on this hotel. This continues to be one of our favorite top Marriott choices in New Orleans, thanks to the elite benefits, specifically the Great Lounge, and also its central location with easy access to Bourbon Street and the Superdome for events. The hotel is usually always very busy, but the staff has always handled the large crowds well. While the rooms are plain and unsexy, the bathroom small, overall the rooms are above average compared to many older hotels in New Orleans, and the bed and cool air conditioning provide for a good night of sleep. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Marriott New Orleans. If you did, a like on this video would be greatly appreciated. And if you like travel related content like this, then please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when I drop the next content. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, Sherry.
drink. You guys can drink of this. I'm out of cocktail, babies. Come on. <laughs> 